Hello, this is Chestnut Complete Part 6 and this is the final chapter and the final video of this complete series. I am doing this recording straight after the last part, so just because we've nearly finished it. Anyway, chapter 10 Mobius's Trip or Mobius Trip. What a mess, harrowing. Having narrowly avoided encountering his other self, Joe finds that the time machine is gone. With, the doc with Dr. Lambert's help, Joe is put in pursuit of the time pilot. But where and when is this place? Let's continue. Let's finish this off with chapter 10. He's not putting back together. Yeah, the time machine is pretty banged up. No, no, no. Yeah, we've lost our time machine thing, and we well, probably can't get back. Okay, this is a lot, lot different. An alternate universe, maybe. Probably. Probably. The big pile. Half by door. It's a lot of dirt and rubble in the way. Exactly. Okay, it's overgrown. A lot. And there's a lot of time. Machines. Exactly. Another time machine. There's a shovel here. And there's a grave here. Apparently. Oh, thick roots. I'm guessing we use that to. No, we can't. Can we get through? Hmm. Oh, I know what we use the shovel for. We use the shovel for on the big pile, which is over here. Big pile, shovel. Yep. Now we go through. So, this is a, another. Time pilot, maybe? There's health stuff. So let's pick up the cloth. Oh, he's a bit dead. <laughs> yeah. What's in the a rock? The cracked rock. We can't do much, but what are we supposed to do with this cloth? Can we brush him down? No. <laughs> Probably not. So. On this episode, I am going to try and make an effort to not look at walkthrough like I've done with my other ones. I guess then we wipe down the metallic surface. Nope, it's still really dirty. Of course it is. Still really dirty. Can we rub down this? Probably not. We just wet the cloth so if the solar panel is really dirty we can clean it now because there's water on it. Took me a while to find that out. It's pretty easy to find out so I'm guessing this will give us power. Yes it will. Power to what exactly? Power to the time machine. Hmm. So apparently we got power to the time machine, but is it actually powered? Seems to be. Can we go in? Banged up. Oh. Hmm. No. 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 Yep. So I guess it's all I have to do is press the button. Okay, here goes nothing. Some, something is missing. So we have to find something, because apparently something is missing, but what exactly? <gasps> Holy shit! That's a person in the wall. 
knife. Good. <laughs> How's that even possible? I don't know. <laughs> but we've got a knife to to chop down the roots to go through. Oh, here's the roots. Cut down. Nope. Cut up, cut pebbles. Need something sharper. But what? Sharper. So can we hit this with the rock? Wow. Yes. And we sharpened it. Cool. So we cut down the roots now. So let's cut down the roots to see what's inside. Inside here is Frank. What are you doing here? Frank? J Joe! Oh, P please. Need water. What are you? Please. I'll get you some water. Hang in there. So, I know where water is. We will get it for you, Frank. Don't you worry. So, there's a water stream here with dripping water. Hopefully, it's not contaminated. Otherwise, you might die from our contaminated water. Hopefully, I just killed him. Hopefully. <laughs> but why would Frank be in here? Because he didn't have a time travel device, did he? Here you go, Frank. Thank you. I don't understand. What are you doing here? Where are we? I'm not sure. I had no time. I pushed it as far as it'd go. But from what I've been reading, everything gets imprecise the farther you travel. Even your physical location can get messed up. Nobody's been this far. We could be hundreds Maybe thousands of years in the future, for all I know. I don't get it. So, you're a, a time pilot now? Do I really need to spell it out for you, Joe? I stole it. What? You stole the time machine, but, but why? Look, I've got no reason to tell you, but I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> you're the last person I'll be sharing anything with anyway. The truth is... I'm a Soviet agent. Cut it out, Frank. I'm not falling for that one again. I'm not joking. Frank, you're just sick. Confused. Come on. You can't be. Where's your Russian accent? Joe, I'm an undercover agent deployed by the Kremlin. My job is to fit in. How far do you think I'd get if I went around calling everyone comrade? Uh... Hmm. So he's a Soviet agent. My real name is Yuri Barishev. I came to America in my early 20s. I went to school here, worked here, spent nearly 10 years building the foundation of an ordinary life. But the truth is that my life is far from ordinary. I am a spy. I was planted by the Soviet Foreign Intelligence Agency to gather intel on advanced U.S. military research programs. And I started getting my first missions in the mid-60s. At the time, I thought I had built a promising portfolio of leads, but as I started to pursue them, most of them turned out to be worthless. By 1968, I had run out of goodwill with my handlers at the Kremlin. I was a disgrace, and headed for extraction. Desperate for something, anything to report. I came across a Canadian company moving large shipments of iridium, osmium, rare metals not typically used in mainstream manufacturing. 
The buyer turned out to be a government shell, rerouting the materials to unofficial contractors, one of which turned out to be Archon. Having convinced my superiors that I was onto something, I got a job as a janitor. But I didn't dig up much. Until you showed up. You were a great distraction, giving me plenty of chances to access off-limits areas. And for a while, I was able to scrounge together enough intel to keep the Kremlin happy. My hunch was correct, but I didn't have the full picture. Not yet. The metals were being used to build something unusual, all right. But I just couldn't piece it together. What I found made no sense. Time travel. Doomsday scenarios. It read like bad science fiction. For a while, I thought they were on to me, feeding me bogus information. But as time went on, with security tightening around the labs and no one confronting me, I began to suspect that my intel was legit. But time was running out. With Brezhnev and your President Nixon set to negotiate the Nuclear Disarmament Treaty in a few weeks, my superiors were demanding results. My job on the line, I got desperate and careless. And this morning, I got caught. I was tailing an engineer into an off-limits lab when I bumped into Barney from security. Ironically, management chalked up my trespassing to cluelessness and settled for just firing me. Knowing I wouldn't get another chance, I stole a security badge and snuck back in. I just found the time machine operator's manual when you showed up out of nowhere and nearly screwed it all up. Then it clicked. Not only could I steal the technology, it was the perfect getaway, too. Using the manual, I set the destination as high as it would allow. I figured if I could just get far away, I'd have plenty of time to figure out how to get it back to the motherland, but... Well, I guess you know the rest. Listen, Joe. I'm really sick, and I'm not making it back. But you still can. The time machine has a timer, like a toaster. It's designed to return home unless the timer's reset. I removed the main power supply fuse to keep it from taking off without me. Here. Take it. I have no idea how you got here, and I guess it doesn't matter. Still, despite my mission, a double life, and the deceit, your friendship was always genuine. You're an honest guy, Joe, and I've really enjoyed your company. No, no please leave me. The pain's coming back. No, oh, it hurts to to, to talk. Oh, 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 need rest. You rest up, buddy. Rest up real well. Goodbye, Frank. So we return home, I guess. We're still coughing. Hopefully we haven't got poisoned by anything, but yeah, Frank was a Soviet agent, apparently trying to get intel on at the time machine, but he went to find it and it great, gave him great pain, or he suffered the fate. Anyway, can we put everything here and go back now yes we can goodbye frank <laughs> okay this is different what happened to it seems to have crashed hello you seem to died quarantine lockdown can we open the key with the door? Nope. 
Oh, I know. We knock down. We knock down the wall and go through. Okay. Happening. Can we go through here? Nope, it's under lockdown. I'm guessing we have to go this way. No. No, it can't be. The, the foreign organism. It, it's it's me. Whoa, what? I brought back the disease. I'm the one who spreads it. Oh, it, God. It was me all along. And it loops back. I must have <laughs> brought it back with me. Oh, God. I think I'm going to throw up. I, I, I can't deal with this. What do I do? I don't know. Can we go in your cryo container? <coughs> Center. Can we go in <coughs> it? Control <coughs> from turn. Can if we go in a cryo chamber, lock down. Choose. Don't know how to work it. So it was also long. Hmm, that's interesting. It's in here. We we can't go through there. Empty folders. Can we go in there? Nope, it's locked. What can we do? Hmm. Can we insert the key in the chamber console? There's no keyhole. Hmm. Because controls tubes don't know how to work it. Do the cryo chambers have keys? Holes. Keyholes, nope. Draw control from the terminal. I'm guessing we have to go in there to prevent ourselves from infecting the whole area. But what do we use these keys? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe one of the filing cabinets have a keyhole. So let's try this filing cabinet. Oh, maybe we try the one with a note on. Oh. Yep. <coughs> What's in here? A booklet. Exactly. Operator's guide. Yep, as I guess we're gonna put us ourselves into the cryo chamber. Which is good to prevent ourselves from. Right, let's go in. So let's prevent ourselves from infecting the entire facility. Goodbye. And we're frozen. What the hell? Where the hell are we? We in the future? Maybe we've been cryo. But I don't think it gives a little when I push it. Can't get it open. Oh, it's a hospital. So we uh, we've saved ourselves, presumably. Presumably we've saved ourselves. We can't get in there. Piece of paper on the keypad. Nope. Piece of paper with the PC. Nope. Like one I've never seen. Solitaire. <laughs> of course. I was at the computer. 
from kind never see we can go into number three okay yes hello you seem no way to escape it no way out no way out no way out i'm sorry what end of days scourge and sickness the cleansing of the earth the overlords conspired against us tricked us made us bring the poison back into the nest like good little ants who did too late what's done is done no backsies but we must try do you hear me I, uh, uh, sure. <laughs> the key to salvation. I've seen it. Felt its color. Know its shape. <laughs> they don't know that I know. Oh, no. But I know. I know. Write it. Write it, write it, write it. Before it disappears. Write it down before it disappears. Took away my tools. <laughs> I'll forget without my tools. Your tools? Pens, paper, they're erasing the slate, forcing me to forget, trying to break my resolve. The persistence of memory, I must repeat, 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 all the time repeat. Oh, they fear me, cower at the sight of scientific rigor. They know I'm close, so they take away my tools. I'll show them. The blinding light of the scientific method casts no shadows. We have paper here. Do you want to write Need it down something? Need paper to reproduce the key. Need the paper. Gotta have paper. We just gave you some paper. My dear, then the sword. The pen, the pen, the pen. We need to find a pen for you. There's no pens on here. Could use a pencil if we have one. Can we get in there to find a pen or pencil? Hello? You seem agitated. Whoa there, man. No offense intended. Uh, no. Okay. There's this one, but we need a code for it. But we need a pen for this. So where would we find one? Oh, there. Box of pens. Ah, we can't. We need something like a crutch. Ikea next to the handle. Yeah, Ikea's in the future. <laughs> we need that crutch to knock the pens down. Oh, there's a chair here. Can we have it? Remote. I'm guessing we remote the TV in the other room. So, I'm... S do you need the TV on? We turned it off. Goodbye. Got the crutch. Yep, we have. I'm finding it pretty easy to figure out stuff right now. So, knock for pens over. Closet, but I got one down. Yep. It's a red pen, but I don't think that matters too much. We got you a pen. My dear, then the sword. The pen, the pen, the pen. The key. The key. Keep it close. Keep it safe. Bring help. Don't get caught. Save the kingdom, get the girl. Save the kingdom, get the girl. Save the kingdom, get the girl. 
Okay, I'm guessing this is the code for the keypad. How how you got that? I don't know. But anyway, let's put it in and go in. Hello. Um, Miss Nurse, I. Oh, hi there. Goodness, <laughs> you startled me. You could have just knocked. And it's doctor, actually, Dr. Emma Brown. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but we don't have any files on you, so I don't even know your name. I... it's Joe, ma'am. Oh, call me Emma. We're not so formal here. It's nice to meet you, Joe. I'm sorry, Dr. Brown. I don't know how to say this, but you, everyone here, is in serious danger. I'm very sick, and it's very important you call the authorities and- Whoa, whoa, whoa! Take it easy, deep breaths. There's nothing to be afraid of. How do you feel? I... Okay, I guess. A, a little sore. See, you're fine. And the soreness is to be expected. You've undergone muscle therapy. You've been asleep for at least three decades, after all. Maybe even more. What? Where am I? What year is this? Easy, Joe. I know it's a lot to take in. It'd be a shock to anyone's system. Haven't been under for as long as you have. It's 2012, and this is the psychiatric ward at St. Genevieve's Hospital. You were brought out of hibernation five weeks ago. Like the others, you were placed in an artificial coma for regenerative muscle therapy and brought here for evaluation and rehab after everything checked out. Oh, God. The tubes. You have to listen to me, Doctor. I I'm dangerously sick. I was carrying something when, when, when I got in. I oh, that? Well, that's true. You did all have some kind of flu. Actually, the resident physician did find it peculiar how you had all contracted a type of avian flu that only first appeared in the late 90s, and a new strain at that. In any case, the pathogen was largely dormant due to the extended hibernation. We run very thorough medical checks on all our cryo clients, so we gave you all a shot of our regular cocktail. Cleared it right up before you even came to. So it's... gone? But Archon... Yes, I'm afraid I don't know much about all of that. All I know is that the company that froze you went bankrupt back in the early 70s. A victim of industrial sabotage, I think. Anywho, the remaining assets were sold off, and the cryoform company bought the cryogenics technology. As per ethical requirements, that included all of you who were frozen there. We've been helping rehabilitate cryoform's clients for the past five years or so. Mostly folks suffering from previously incurable terminal illnesses and heavy wallets. But you didn't hear that from me, hmm? Unfortunately, cryogenics was a little... experimental when you went under. So, while the company's been freezing and reviving clients for quite some time, you had to stay confined to the original equipment. Apparently, a lot of Archon's original documentation was destroyed in a fire. So Cryoform had practically no information on any of you. That's another reason it took so long to figure out how to revive you. Sadly, the others haven't been quite as coherent. They share certain delusions, you know, end of the world, that sort of thing. An unfortunate side effect of Cryogenic's primitive state at the time, I suspect. You, however, seem just fine. Apart from the shock, I mean. So... so I'm... Not sick? You sure? <laughs> yes, Joe, quite sure. In fact, I see no reason to keep you here. We have an excellent rehabilitation team who'll get you settled into your new life in no time. Just come see me when you're ready to go. Well, we're ready to go now, I think. So, are we all ready to go? I guess. Oh, don't worry. The rehab team's eager to help get you settled in. I know it may feel a little overwhelming now, but trust me, you'll love it in 2012. Endless opportunities. A whole new lease on life. Speaking of, I happened to catch you on the surveillance monitors a little while ago, and you seem to show excellent problem-solving skills. You like puzzles, Joe? 
I... Perfect. I'll be sure to mention it to the career coaches. They'll find just the right thing for you. Yeah. <laughs> We're quite the puzzle solver. So we presumably go back to normal society despite what everything's happened. We're in 2012 now in this time zone. We're in a normal desk job. So, yeah. The end. That was the Silent Age, I guess. A very good time travel story. Yeah, that was the Silent Age. It was a very good a time travel story it was very interesting. I, there were some points where I got stuck on and I had to look up a walkthrough because I just couldn't progress without doing that. But I did find out stuff myself, even though it was hard to. But yeah, that was the Silent Ridge. And I don't know what else I'm going to do in my chestnut completes, but this is a very good game. And I recommend it. Link in the description of every video. So yeah. That's been the Silent Edge, and this has been Chestnut Complete. And yeah. That's going to be about it. Chestnut out.